Moving on, one of four Israelis is now unemployed. This is the highest unemployment rate in Israel's history. But now it looks like those trying to get back into the market may have to compete in wholly new ways, because demands have changed considerably. Well, to understand how Israel is dealing with this crisis, we're joined by Dr. Vili Abraham, ILTV contributor and consumer behavior expert. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. Now, how does this depression caused by COVID-19 compare to previous hits to the economy in Israel? All right, so we're talking about uh, very high unemployment. Uh, the unemployment rate has exceeded uh, 10% only in three instances uh, in Israel's history. It was just before uh, the Six-Day War, uh, during the big immigration from the former Soviet Union, and during the Second Intifada. These are the only three instances where the unemployment rate was above 10%, and it's expected to remain so until the end of the year. So it means that until the end of the year, for the next uh, six months or so, we are expecting to see about 400,000 Israelis out of work. Wow. So how much, you know, can you quantify just how much the coronavirus epidemic has actually cost the Israeli economy? Uh, well, the estimates uh, range between 50 billion shekels to 90 billion shekels. And this consists of the support to the unemployed, to businesses, and also as a result of lost uh, tax revenue, because there were virtually no sales for about six to eight weeks in All many right. sectors. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about what the new economy is going to look like and how that's going to evolve as, as, as people start coming back to work. You know, are there positions that have completely disappeared from the Israeli economy now that, that we're not expected to have? Well, I won't say that they've disappeared, that, but they're less in demand right now. So, of course, the tourism industry has been impacted significantly. Uh, there is less uh, demand for store managers, shift, shift managers, office workers, sales assistants, and, of course, uh, waiter jobs. So these are less in demand right now. But if we're looking into the future, there are a lot of jobs that are going to be in greater demand. For example, people who are digital marketers, people who are programmers, uh, if we're talking about the use of artificial intelligence and augmented reality. So what the future holds is actually more jobs for the tech, tech save savvy. So it means that people who are looking for, uh, you know, switching jobs or to retrain themselves, they better go into high tech. So, so again, you know, what do people with, you know, maybe non-skilled laborers and, and all these people in small businesses, what are they supposed to do? What kind of positions might they maybe, should they maybe try to go for in the interim at least? Well, uh, in the interim, if you're looking at uh, people who have worked as sales assistants and now they're unemployed, there are more and more jobs that are in search of uh, social media managers, people who will write content, mm. people who will upload content to Facebook or Instagram, uh, whether it's managing the customer service through these platforms. So these jobs are in, in high demand right now. And I think this is a great opportunity for the government to retrain workers and to really go into more tech, tech jobs. Uh, mm. There's really not much you can do privately, but what you can do, there are a lot of online courses that provide uh, courses in programming or digital marketing, and these are the type of courses that I would take. There are a lot of courses that uh, Google provides, for example, and you get a certificate. So once you get the certificate, you will be able to go and find a job. Wow. So it doesn't have to be a really a formal degree or something. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Billy. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Now, you might not know it because sadly,